Cryptocurrency, E-D-U. That's Cryptocurrency Education with Yolanda Jones right here on Power 904. Let's get crypto ties, y'all. It's time to get crypto right here and right now. The inventor of Bitcoin, the name Satoshi Nakamoto, this person uploaded a white paper to a cryptology mailing list that was entitled Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Now, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Now, uh, in this document, he outlined the concept of this cryptocurrency, which uses no central bank or authority to allow financial transactions between two anonymous people. Lo and behold, Bitcoin was born. The thing is, no one knows exactly who this Satoshi Nakamoto actually is. Now, after Bitcoin was up and running, his communications became very limited and then disappeared altogether. And in the mid-2010, uh, meanwhile, the value of Bitcoins have steadily soared, just steadily rising, leading to speculation that whoever he is, he is probably very, very rich by now. <laughs> At least in theory, because he is a mysterious person. Now, um, he, no one knows who, who this person is, and it may be a group of people, maybe the cypherpunks. A lot of people think uh, it was those guys that started the, uh, the digital um, math, uh, math computations trying to create an awesome system to give back to the people to control their own money. It may be them, it may be Nick Sabo, uh, excuse me. No one really knows. Um, and like I said, his communication started to disappear back in 2010, and he just went off the face of the earth. Now, what I think, this is my own speculation, that in 2012, there was a guy by the name of um, Devin Alexander. Devin Alexander decided he wanted to talk with the IRS because they were honing in, they want to know what this thing is about, um, can we get some, you know, mainly tax money out of this, <laughs> you know how the government does. So he, he was talking with Satoshi, and you can, you can research this, don't take my word for anything, you can research this yourself. He was talking to Satoshi, letting them know, I'm going to go ahead and let them, you know, come in, talk with them, um, whatever they want, blah, blah, blah. This is when Satoshi Nakamoto disappeared. Now, I don't know if he disappeared because he didn't want any more to do with it because he was a very anonymous person. And he may have disappeared just to let whoever, like uh, uh, Devin and all the other guys just go ahead and take it and let Bitcoin just grow into uh, whatever, you know. So no one really knows why he disappeared. But as we see, Bitcoin was in Pandora's box. The box has been opened and there's no way you can put the ghosts back in. It just, it's gone, it's here. It's not going anywhere. Um, and a lot of people ask me, well, isn't it, I heard it's a scam and blah, 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 blah. It's not real, this don't make sense. But let me tell you, if it wasn't real and it didn't make sense, it would not be on the New York Stock Exchange as a commodity. That makes, us, that makes it real. It makes it real when you can go to the grocery store with your BitPay card and swipe it. Don't have to go to the bank and put money on the card. It's already there from my wallet. And buy groceries with my BitPay card. That holds my Bitcoin when I want to use it. So you can use this today. You can use Bitcoin right now at this very moment today to buy whatever you want. Okay, it's the new money. It's the new form of money. It's safer, it's more reliable, and it doesn't lose its value. And let me break that down to you because if you go, um, I think one guy was telling me, he said, well, I'm just gonna hold on to my dollars. <laughs> you know, I got them under a, under a, 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 
under the porch or under the mattress, with Africa, all you know, all this money. But but when you do that, your dollar isn't growing; it's losing value. So if you got twenty thousand dollars under a mattress today, and you go back and check that twenty thousand dollars in six months, guess how much money you have? Twenty thousand dollars. I put twenty thousand dollars in Bitcoin, and it grows t tomorrow night. It goes up 14%. Then the next week it goes up another 9%. It's steadily, steadily, steadily increasing in value. Okay? Now I can go into my um, wallet, take out that little bit of growth, put it on my big pay card if I want to use it. And I, like to, I don't like to say spend, because spend means it's gone, never coming back. So I like to go ahead and use that money, that Bitcoin for wherever I want to use it with. Or I can just leave it there. I can hollow it. A lot of people now are trading and exchanging Bitcoin on the uh, uh, cryptocurrency exchanges and even the Forex exchanges. There's a lot of ways you can, you know, use your Bitcoin. There's a lot of ways. You can use it um, and send that, can send it to, um, friends that they need some assistance uh, monetarily I can send them some Bitcoin and there even there's even a wallet called Criterium if they don't even have a wallet all they need is their email address I'll put it in my Criterium wallet and it instantly creates a wallet for them that's amazing that is phenomenal see what I'm saying it's amazing they don't even have to have a wallet just give me your email address because how we deal with crypto. And they can take that and then convert it to uh, fiat or send it to their bank. That's simple. So it's amazing. I love Bitcoin. Now let me tell you something. There was one purchase made with Bitcoin. The first purchase ever made with Bitcoin. I'm going to talk about that here. And just to let you know, money is only money. If you can't use it to purchase something of value, what you got there? So in the early days of Bitcoin, it was still very much a theory. And the coins were worth a fraction of a cent. Now I sure wish I could have got some then. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I sure wish I could have got some then. But on May 22nd, 2010, there was a guy named Laszlo Hyannix, if I can pronounce his name correctly. He agreed to give, he had all this Bitcoin. Because remember, it was a fraction of a cent. And I guess he didn't have faith in it, I don't know. Okay, but he decided to give a guy in England, check this out, 10,000 Bitcoin. 10,000 Bitcoin. Now, if the guy, um, ordered him a pizza. He said, you know, he gave it to the guy to order him a pizza from Papa John's. The local Papa John's and he had it delivered. And as proof, Laszlo uploaded the above photo. Well, this, this is a, a little picture here on my phone here. He, he uploaded that photo as the first real Bitcoin transaction. So he was kind of, I guess, proud of it or I don't know uh, what, what his reason was behind it. Um, the, but that Bitcoin transaction did occur at, in, in London at the uh, local Papa John's. And as of the date of this writing, those two pieces, yeah, it was two pieces, would have cost, according to the day of, the, of this writing here, I think this was written in 2018, it would have been 123,820, 123,820, I think no, 123 billion, sorry, 820 million thousand dollars. But check this out. Um, take um, take 10,000 bitcoins and times it by 9,700 dollars. Let's do the math. Hold on. Today, yes. Where's my calculator? Ten 
97 million dollars. Amazing. So that this just tells you how much it has increased in value and what you can do with it. And, and the fun thing about this part of it, every year on May 22nd, um, Papa John's, that's, that's, that's the big coin day for Papa John's. <laughs> they call it this, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto Day. They give away free pizza. So make sure you get your pizza. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Okay, now um, let's talk about why we need cryptocurrency. And, um, and if, if you have pen and paper, write this down. Um, go to YouTube and there is a video and its name, the name of the video is Bitcoin, Death of Central Banking. It will wake you up. The dollar is declining. It has declined. And um, now the federal government and the Federal Reserve System, they're way behind. I don't know what's wrong with them, but they're way behind digital currency. They're, 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 they're way behind. They don't, they, they don't want to, for a while, they didn't want to be bothered with it. And you know, those guys, those, these, are, these, are guys these are old guys. This is the old, old money. Um, but now, since China is in the process of creating the digital yuan, okay, the federal government and the Federal Reserve had perked up because the USD is no longer considered the global currency anymore. Due to all the sanctions that has been put on the trade between the U.S. and China, China is a world power now. So they can put sanctions too, back and forth here. So instead of going through that, no one wants the dollar anymore. They, they, they're, they're, they see what, these governments see what's happening with the U.S. dollar. It's not as powerful uh, as it used to be. So instead of going through all of that, they decided, many countries have decided, well, we'll just do Bitcoin. We'll just circumvent all the way around that. And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Now, before you, uh, we were kind of forced to, you know, relinquish or not use checks anymore and get the, uh, the debit card. And, my name, and I think a few people use checks, but not many. And we were forced to do that. But let's not get forced to use crypto. Let's research, take notes, get involved, test it out, set up a wallet. If you don't do nothing, put $5 and buy $5 worth of Bitcoin just to see the power of it, okay? So the value of the dollar bill, I think the last time I checked was like 78 cents to your dollar. So you're getting cheated. Nothing is dollar for dollar anymore. You're ours. You are really getting cheated out of your money. It's costing more to buy things. So I highly recommend getting into cryptocurrency. And there's many ways you can do this. You don't have to spend all your, you don't have to even go out and buy a whole $9,000 coin. There's so many ways. We'll talk about, about that in the next session that you can obtain some of this liquid, this digital gold, okay? <laughs> now, let's move on to, let's see here, where was I at? Okay, all right. Through the centuries, trade has, every, uh, um, through the centuries, trade has become incredibly complex. Everyone trades with everyone worthwhile. Trade is a record and is recorded in bookkeeping. Uh, this information is often isolated to, and closed to the public. And like we were, we were talking about the um, banking system. Uh, it, that's not an open source information uh, of, your, of the ledger there. Now, this information is often, often isolated and closed to the public. This is the reason why we use third parties and middlemen we trust to facilitate and approve our transactions. So what cryptocurrency has done is cut out the middleman. 
We don't need a middleman anymore. They don't like that. But we don't need them. Because when you go to the bank, uh, open up your account, what do you have to do? You have to sit down and talk to somebody. Give up your life, your kids, <laughs> your car, whatever, just to get a little bit of something. Or just to start an account. But with crypto, you get it, it's yours, you own it, you control it. So we don't need the middleman when we're dealing with cryptocurrency. <clears throat> Think governments, banks, accountants, notaries, these are third parties and the paper money in your wallet. We call these trusted third parties. But why put your trust in a, um, a third party that has no value to it anymore? Cryptocurrency software enables a network of computers to maintain a collective bookkeeping via the internet. This, book, this book, bookkeeping is neither closed nor in control of one party or a central authority. And that's the good thing. You know, um, the banks has been controlling the world. But that's not the case anymore. They're scrambling now. They really, they're scrambling. A lot of banks have closed, some banks have closed down, laying all the workers because, like I say, Cryptocurrency, it's like Pandora's box opening up and you can't put those ghosts back in. It's, it's over. It's here. It's here, guys. Now, um, <clears throat> now, uh, like I said, uh, there's uh, one party or a central authority is not in control of cryptocurrency. Rather, it is public and available in one digital ledger, which is fully distributed across the network. And this is called the blockchain. Now there's nothing new about ledgers. Okay, ledgers have been around for a while since the old trading days. But the difference is this is a digital le ledger. It's open source and it's open to the public and it's accurate. It can't be hacked, can't be controlled. And, um, It's, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's just accurate. It's accurate. I mean, a lot of people, like I do a lot of things online. I, I, I do um, crypto. I buy things online with crypto. Um, I do stocks and things like that. And a lot of people are weary of, oh, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want, you know, somebody going to get this or get that. But you can, you'll take your information to the bank, you'll take your information to apply for a job, and you think it's safe? <laughs> Come on! Here is a secure digital ledger that cannot be tampered with, cannot be hacked, cannot be manipulated. And uh, there are so many hacks that has happened to a lot of banks um, you go to get your money and you can't get it out, it has been hacked. And all your information is there. Um, so I advise you guys to pull your money out, at least some of it, and put it in crypto or, or you know, little, uh, digital gold is what I call it. Now, in the blockchain, all the transactions are logged, including information on the time, like I said earlier, the date, the participants and the amount of every single transaction. Each node, and node, nodes just to let you know, are computers all around. And each node in the network owns a full copy of the blockchain. On the basis of complicated state-of-the-art mathematical principles, the transactions are verified by the cryptocurrency miners who maintain the ledger. The mathematical principles also ensure that these nodes automatically and continuously agree about the current state of the ledger and every transaction in it. So it's a agreed upon census of everything that's going across that ledger. If anyone attempts to corrupt transaction, 
the nodes will not arrive at a consensus and hence will refuse to incorporate the transaction in the blockchain. So it's accurate guys, it's accurate, safe. Now, um, if anyone uh, will cover that, refuse to incorporate the transaction in the blockchain, let's see. Now, so every transaction is public and thousands of nodes unanimously agree that a transaction has occurred on date X at time Y. So this ledger is more secure and more accurate than your average central bank ledger. So one is digital and companies are scrambling to get this blockchain today as we speak. Even Walmart today as we speak. They understand, they see the vision, they understand the importance of it. They understand no more chargebacks, that costs. They understand the value and the increases that Bitcoin can bring their, you know, bring their companies. They understand this. When are we gonna understand? Don't get left out. I don't want nobody to get left out. Get you a little bit. Just start somewhere. You did nothing but just read about it. You know? Read about it. Just get some understanding. I'm trying to do the best I can today to help you understand why you need this. Now, um, the ledger does not care whether a cryptocurrency represents a certain amount of euros or dollars, it don't, it don't matter. Or anything else of value or property for that matter, users can decide for themselves what a unit of cryptocurrency represents. A cryptocurrency like Bitcoin is divisible into 100 million units and each unit is both individually identifiable and programmable. This means that users can assign properties to each unit. Users can program a unit to represent a euro cent or a share in a company. A kilowatt or energy of digital certificate of ownership because cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology could be used for more than simply money and payment. but also can represent many kinds of property. A thousand barrels of oil, awards credits, or a vote during an election, for example. These are some of the things that would benefit different aspects of the world through blockchain. Voting, uh, even restaurants, trading, I mean, come on, hospitals. There's even a, a digital uh, medical, there's several digital medical coins because companies see the value. They see the vision. They see where the world is going and no one wants to get left behind. So I don't want you guys to get left behind. Come on, let's go. Let's get this. Uh, moreover, cryptocurrency protocols allows us to make our currency smarter and to automate our cash and money flows. Imagine, like I was just saying, imagine healthcare allowance in dollars or euros that can only be used to pay for healthcare at certified parties. I, in this case, whether someone actually follows the rules is no longer verified in the bureaucratic process afterwards. That's not good. You simply program these rules into the money and compliance up front. That's amazing. I mean, that, that's just phenomenal. I just love crypto and I get so excited talking about it. I do apologize, <laughs> but this is just, uh, it just excites me. Now the unit can even be programmed in such a way that it will automatically be returned to the provider if the receiver doesn't use it after a certain amount of time. That's awesome. And that's on the blockchain. We're talking about the blockchain, guys. The blockchain here. This way, the provider can ensure that allowances are not hoarded. A company can control its spending in the same way. 
my programming budgets for salaries, machinery, materials, and maintenance so that the respective money is specified and cannot be spent on other things. Automating such matters leads to considerable decrease in bureaucracy. Do the Bitcoin, the government is shutting down. <laughs> they better get busy, they better get on it. Cryptocurrency, E-D-U. That's Cryptocurrency Education with Yolanda Jones, right here on Power 904. Let's get crypto ties, y'all. It's time to get crypto right here and right now. All right, awesome. Thank you, thank you. We're back. And um, let's talk about the collapse of the U.S. dollar. As I said before, the dollar, U.S. dollar is losing its value and its power all around the world, even within here in the United States. So let's talk a little bit about that and we're gonna wrap it up and end it there. Now, many experts warn that the U.S. dollar will collapse and lead to global economic turmoil. Investors are warning all to rush to other currencies to escape further losses. Global trade would seize up because the majority of the international <clears throat> contracts demand a dollar payment. Other assets would skyrocket. The worst hit would be currencies like the Euro, the Yen, and the Yuan. We talked about the Yuan earlier, uh, but China is on it. They're, 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 they're digitizing it. Now, gold prices would soar, and gold has been going up. So, hey, guys, get some, I call uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, I call it digital gold, because it's digitized. Physical gold, um, it has this use case, but you're not gonna take a bar of gold to the store and say, hey, give me some groceries. It has to be digitized. And there's digital currency uh, backed by gold that, that uh, is on the gold standard. Um, there's a lot of companies out there now that has digitized gold. So you can now use gold, um, digitize it, as currencies. I mean, you can store gold in a vault, but you're definitely not gonna break it down and take it to buy something. Okay, so gold prices, like I said, um, are soaring as we speak here today, and interest rates in the U.S. and the United States would rise as demand for treasuries fail and fall. And there's a thing, there's a term called negative interest. And let me break that down to you. What that means is, when you put your money in the bank, okay, instead of you earning interest on that money, what's gonna happen, if it hasn't already, is you're gonna pay the bank just to hold your money. Are you serious? But that's called negative interest rate. So let's not get there. Let's, 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 let's look for other stores of value for our money so we don't fall into this turmoil. U.S. economy is, uh, you know, like they say, they predicted it is about to collapse. The, the U.S. dollar is going down, and that is uh, there is an awesome document uh, documentary um, by Peter Schaff. Um, let me spell that for you. It's S C H I F F. Peter Schiff. I'm sorry, not Schaff. Peter Schiff. So look that up. You can. Um, Find it on YouTube, the collapse of the central dollar, Peter Schiff and his views on the US economy. Now there are some nice books that you could um, take advantage of. If you are a reader, um, there are digital books as well. You can get on the, uh, what's that called? Um, Ebooks, um, Amazon Kindle. I'm sorry, Amazon Kindle. And I'll just give you a couple of them. Um, the Complete Beginner's Guide to Bitcoin, for one. The Complete Beginner's Guide to Ethereum, and that's the number two cryptocurrency. Uh, Ethereum is at 200, as we speak today. It may have went up, I haven't checked the uh, charts yet. Um, the Complete Beginner's Guide to Lightning Network and Blockchain for Dummies. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. So that's uh, some of the uh, crypto video libraries that you can take advantage of. 
And we're going to end it there because we're going to come back on our next session and we're going to talk about how you can get cryptocurrency and how to set up your wallets and what wallets you can use. And we'll go through that process on our next session. And I want to thank you all for tuning in and have an awesome weekend. Bye-bye. And get crypto.